Hey guys, welcome back to Super Mario 3D Land. Previously, we've tackled World 3, and now we're moving on to the next world, World 4. Yeah, I'm enjoying this game, and... Huh? Another one? What's this? Wow. There is still hope after all. What are you waiting for? Let's do this, Mario! And to let you guys know, this is post-commentary, since I will be providing my thoughts on the entire game, as well as, well, each level itself. And let's get started with Area 1 of World 4. And to let you guys know, we're back at 30 FPS, and thank God for it, since I do believe 30 FPS, the game looks a lot better than it should be. And I can't believe I messed up, and now I'm down to shrunk, I'm shrunk, so that sucks. Anyway, we now have to take care of these purse-type enemies. Yeah, if you stomp on them, then they'll spurt out a lot of coins and die. And that's about it, since I don't really have that much to say. Anyway, let's check up and see if we can find anything. And hello! That's it? A 1-up? I thought we'd be getting a star coin. Eh, whatever. More lives are better. Not that it matters, since I hardly ever die. The only time I ever do die was, I believe, back in World 1. That, to me, was a major humiliation, and it sucks. What, what can you do? It doesn't really matter for me at this point. Anyway, I'm moving around all over the place trying to figure out what to do here, since... Yeah, I really am confused. I'm going at this also blind, because I know where some of the star coins are, but not every single star coin, because I'm trying my hardest just to go through the game no problem. And you know there's a trick here that you could actually use to get yourself extra lives, but you need to be at a set position to do so. Though, I may show it to you in an extra video, but some people have already covered that, so there's no need to worry. And I got myself the first star coin, which is good enough for me. And we're continuing on our way, and... Damn it! Why the heck did I get hit? That sucks. Ah, oh well. I'm continuing on. Moving on. And I gotta watch out, because without the Fire Flower, I can't defend myself against these Piranha Plants. Which stinks. Anyway, I continue on my way, heading upwards, and I believe this is where I miss a star coin. Don't worry, I cover it in an extra video where I get them all and stuff like that. I believe it's better this way, so that way I could show you that I don't miss anything. And this is another level here where you need the 3D, and except this time I actually know what I'm doing. But you also need to be careful, because one false move and you can end up falling to your doom, and that could be really bad. Well, fortunately, I'm doing this nice and slowly and carefully. Though I swear, if the capture card provides the options for, like, adding 3D, it would actually be a very useful feature. I really mean it. Very useful. Anyway, I'm almost at the top, and that was too close for comfort. Oh my god, I was literally flipping out. And I get myself star coin number two. Though I do know that I'm supposed to take the cannon to get the last one. But I forgot, and that's my fault. Yeah, I am to blame for that. Anyway, I continue on, and I've shrunk again because I got whacked by the shell, and I end up losing my Mario power. So I'm now small Mario, and which means one more hit and I'm dead. Not to mention that I'm running low in time. Time is something that not many people have, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I have to get these five red coins, so that way I can get myself a power-up. In this case, it's a fire flower, and it's good that I get one. And this next part here is actually not that hard, so... You can basically head left, and there's like an added clock, which can boost your time up by 100 seconds. Very useful if you're running out of time, because you're going to need all the time you can get. And with that taken care of, I head upwards even further. And now this is the next part here, where you have to deal with these annoying red enemies, like these beetles. Yeah, they look like annoying beetle enemies, you gotta watch out for these prickly type monsters. And I keep on... Those are prickly plants, actually. I forgot. I keep messing up. And if you're watching this alongside New Super Mario Bros. U, we're at the halfway point. Well, the main game, that is, because 3D Land actually adds eight added worlds. And they make the game a lot more challenging. Believe me, I know. Anyway, I'm almost at the end of the level, since this last part here, you need to time your jump just right, so that way you can not only hit one of the beetles, but you can also time your movement so that way you can reach the top of the flag goal and get an extra life. I get a lot of these all the time, so <laughs> at least I'm having fun with it. Anyway, I hit this up here, and I get myself a 1-up. A much-deserved 1-up. And enjoy the end of the level. Watch the extra video. Ah, 
Oh, that's about it. I already got all the star coins, so I'm not that worried. Don't worry, we're going to continue on as usual, since, as you know, I have about at least four, five more worlds to go through. Let's first head up for this mystery box, since you're going to be encountering a lot of these as you progress through the game. And this one's pretty easy. You just use Fire Flowers to take them down, get the coin, get as many coins as possible, and then you wait it out. That's nothing special. Nothing fancy, in my humble opinion, but whatever. Anyway, we got now that taken care of, and now it dies down to nothing. And now we can continue on our way... The game automatically saves to let you know. And we now move on to the second area. Yes, I tackled this level here twice. Why? You'll see what I mean. Anyway, this whole point of the level is that we need to reach all the way up to the top. Yeah, we can do that by whatever means. Also, you gotta watch out for these black piranha plants. They spurt out oil and you could basically use the 3DS mic to blow away at it. If you notice, I've gotten rid of them rather quickly. I gotta make sure to take care of them so that way I don't have to like worry about any threats. Anyway, I'm now taking the high road. There are many ways you could just reach up top. Though I figure wall kicking would actually help. And I basically use the fire flower to take down the Goombas. Yeah, Goombas can sometimes, like, unite in a pair, like in a tower. And you could be able to just shoot fire flowers at them for, like, added damage. Yes! I'm also a bit trigger happy because, quite frankly, I'm fast with, my, with the button pressing and stuff like that. Don't worry, folks. I'm going to make sure I cover everything. I'm going to make sure I beat the game, show y'all what it's about, cover the special worlds, cover any extras, and that's it. I want to make this playthrough really good, and, I'll, and only you guys can help me make it happen. And we found ourselves a hidden star coin. One of three, and actually we found ourselves another clock, which means we have more time. We're going to need all the time we can get at this level. And we got ourselves a much-needed fire flower since, well... It never hurts to be prepared, in my humble opinion, though there's going to be one special power that I'm going to be relying on much, much later. Anyway, let's take care of these Goombas with the Fire Flower, and boom, they're taken down. Though at this point, I wonder to myself, where the heck am I supposed to go? But then I realized I could just head up here, and then something should happen. And I got splattered again, which sucks. Anyway, this next part here, well, there is actually a shortcut which you can take in this level. You just need to keep on going higher and higher, but you need to be on the left side. I thought if I was heading on the right, but I didn't. Then, once you time your jump right, then basically you need to, like, time it higher. Yeah, you gotta make sure, and then after that, you need to wall kick all the way up top, run as fast as possible, and you'll see an orange pipe. Now, I had no idea, and you know what this took me? Surprise, surprise! It's a shortcut to World 5. Who would have thought? But hey, I really like the idea that they add shortcuts. Perfect for those that want to speed run through the game, since they don't want to waste a lot of time. But I'm going to be covering World 5 much later. Now we still have more work to do, since we got to go through now World 4-2. Again. Yes, I know, I apologize, because quite frankly, I'm trying. Anyway, oh great, not again. I still got like splattered with oil. Anyway, these guys are a real pain in the butt, since I mostly just splatter, like, splow on the microphone, so that way I can get rid of them completely. It helps, but basically that helps you take care of it. It's the same with the squids in Mario Kart, where they spurt out, like, some sort of blobby oil to blind you, but you need to, like, blow on the mic so that way you can actually get rid of it completely. Though for me, at this point, I'm just speeding my way through smacking the red block so that way I can be able to access the platforms. It's pretty useful in my opinion and I like it. Anyway, I keep on going and I'm already on the move since quite frankly I'm already f moving as fast as possible. I can't waste any time with this, believe me. Yeah, I already found one exit. I need to find the other. But I'm actually, I actually know what the heck I'm supposed to do. But instead of taking that way, I decided again to take this way here and do like some wall kicking so that way I can get the third and final star coin. I forgot about that when I first went through this, but fortunately, it's easily taken care of. And quite frankly, this is where you can get yourself access to the regular exit. I swear, I'm actually now relying on their other powers a lot more often since timing is always everything. Believe me, I want to make this all work. Thank you very much. And now we just do a long jump, and we got ourselves another one-up. How good am I? And with it, we conclude Area 2. Woohoo! Wow, <laughs> wasn't so hard now, wasn't it? But don't worry, it's going to get a little tougher as the level progresses. Yeah, up next is another black box. Throughout every world, you will encounter black boxes that give you access to extra areas. Though you could ignore them if you want, but for clarity's sake, I suggest that you go through every single one of them. If you have enough coins, you'll be able to access it. And, wow, 
I have no idea about this one. So let's check it out, shall we? World 4, Area 3. And this one's going to get a little tumbly turny. Okay, so the whole point of this gimmick of a level is basically you need to run while trying to keep up because most of the area around here is moving in a set direction. You see these like shapes that are moving in like the left? You need to be able to move in the other direction so that way you can not only keep up, but also take them down. And we're dealing with Tanuki Blocks. Fire flowers are not going to help you, but a butt stomp probably will. And yes, I got my Tanuki suit back. I'm going to be needing this a lot more. And yes, I die here in this world, so sue me. I'm at least trying. Anyway, we found ourselves another hidden area, and like in the previous areas, you get a star, and then you need to speed up as much as possible. Make sure you time your jump here so you don't fall. The faster you go, the more time you have left, and you'll be able to make it and net yourself an extra life. And another co star coin. This is actually the first star coin to let you know. But we still have a lot more to go through. And make sure to stop on these purse monsters. So that way you'll be able to like take them down and collect coins. Too bad all the coins ended up down below. That sucks. Anyway, I hit this red block here which forms platforms. And I should be able to make it. There's the checkpoint here which is good. And like that, there's so. Let's check on the monoculars to see if we can find any toads. Let's see here. Hello, up there! There it is. There's a toad, and at this point, I actually got the second one on that shortcut I took. Anyway, there's star coin number three, and we just we need to time our jumps just right. With the Tanuki suit, it's actually pretty easy. You just hold down your descent, and you'll be able to make it, like so. But sometimes if you whack, whack enemies while you're falling, you'll be able to get some added leverage. So you'll be able to use that to your advantage. Make sure to use whatever possible in order for you to survive. And I missed the one-up, which stinks. But whatever, I don't think it matters since I get like lots of extra lives every level. I think that's a minor complaint compared it to what I have to deal with later, which absolutely sucks. I was literally complaining my butt off. I really wanted to start again, but as I forgot, the game saves after every level. And with that, we get ourselves another 1-Up. And with it, we complete Area 3. Admittedly, I'm actually getting better at this. <laughs> this is no wonder I'm having so much fun with this game. Anyway, I really like Super Mario 3D Land. It's a lot of fun. And now we're tackling our Ghost House. World 4, Area 4. Oh boy, where do I begin with this level? I don't... For starters, I really like the music here. Though you could basically use your tail to whack away, that's only for a temporary reprieve. Now the whole point of this level is that you need to try to survive as much as you can. Survival is important, because you don't want to go through everything all over again. Yes, this level does have checkpoints, but I don't know about that. Since, quite frankly, I'm at least trying on this. Anyway, let's, I take the teleporter, and now I head up even further. The first star coin is easy enough to spot, since you're going to be seeing it around a ring of booze. If you find it, just get it. That's it. Though I did miss the second coin, because I really, really didn't know what I was doing. Don't worry, I cover it in an extra video, like, at the end of the level, and you'll see me get the missing coin. I gotta thank Purple Rodri for that, because I believe he somehow, like, motivated me to come up with this. But I like it nonetheless. Anyway, I take a star, and this is where the fun begins. You use the star to take care of these boos. Take down five of them, and you'll get yourself an extra life, plus a much-needed item. And I got myself another Tanuki Leaf. And more boos show up, and I get more extra lives. Until I realized that the second coin was actually on the bottom right. Not on the top left. I didn't know what I was doing, so I was like, meh, I'll ignore it and I'll just get it later on. Don't worry, I did get it, so I'm not complaining here. Anyway, this last part here is actually more or less, there's the third and final star coin. Though you have to wait till the platforms actually show up, and then you, but I mean, yeah. What I mean to say is, as you keep on moving, the platforms will be visible. Which means you can basically just be careful and just move carefully, so that way you don't fall. And there's a big boo, and we gotta watch out for it, because we don't want to get near it. Though, it's rather easy. It's not that hard, though it could have been a lot better. I actually like the ghost house in this level. It's actually really fun. And there's a doorway, but I decided instead to get the star and not bother waiting for the big boo. I didn't really bother with it, since quite frankly, I didn't know what I was doing. Anyway, I keep on moving. I gotta jump on this coin here to form the platforms. And another... And another, and I think that's about it. Only three, since I get the extra life, no problem. It's actually pretty easy. And that takes care of Area 4. Enjoy the extra that follows.
Nice! That takes care of that since I don't have to go through anything else without any regrets. Now we have ourselves one more area to go through. Wait, what am I? Oh yeah, there is one more and then we take care of the Doom Ship. Anyway, World 4, Area 5, and where do I begin with this level? How do I start this? Every time you flip one of these green exclamation point switches, platforms show up. What you need to do is basically follow the platforms, but sometimes the platforms can also form walls. Keep this in mind when you want to keep on moving. Next part here, you have to hit all four of these and the platforms will start coming to light, forming some kind of like huge tower so that way you can be able to head higher. And we got Boomerang Brothers! Or not, because they're not that threatening. Anyway, let's tackle this area here since I have to get this coin and then I just keep on jumping to form blocks. The more blocks I hit, the more coins I get. Though it's kind of tame. It's kind of tame. It could have been better. It could really could have been better. Anyway, I keep on moving since I actually know what I'm doing. And which I'm trying to figure out which platform should I hit. And I hit this one right here. And now I keep on moving. And I'm supposed to hit this other platform here. And then all the platforms start coming together. And yeah, there's star coin number one. You have to make sure you get it before they disappear or else it'll be a big problem. Anyway, I take the teleporter and it leads me to another section of the level. And I find a nearby checkpoint. Make sure you get these checkpoints. They're really important because you don't want to like go through the level all over again. Bees, go away. Thank you. Now I wait till the pla they give me enough room so that way I can be able to make it. And this next part here is going to be a little tricky. Yeah, because of these spike blocks. These spike blocks are a real pain in the butt. Anyway, I keep on moving. I gotta time my jump on this right. Well, no, I'm not really doing that. I gotta watch out because this beast's so annoying. Anyway, you take this platform here, but whatever you do, you need to jump over the teleporter so that way you can get star coin number two. Like that. Because if not, you have to go through the whole level all over again. And the last level, Boomerang Brother, get away! And nice try, it didn't hit me. Anyway, this last part here is that you need to hit a series of switches so that way you can access some platforms. Though the platforms will disappear after a while. What you need to go through is I think the top left, which means they form all the way up top. But that leads you to the end. That's not what you're aiming for. The one you're aiming for is right here. Right here is where you need to get your hands on star coin number three. And like that, we got it. That takes care of that, and we need to move because these platforms are going to disappear. Now, the last part here, just aim these three green switches, the platforms will start rising up, and then you can take the teleporter all the way to the end of the level. Other than that, it's actually a pretty good level. It's a pretty good test of platforming skill, and the best thing about this is how the layout is. It's really good. It's really well done, and I net myself another extra life. That takes care of that, and with it, we're done with Area 5. Admittedly, I'm enjoying this, but who cares? I'm having fun doing commentary for 3D Land. Since it's just too enjoyable, I really can't get enough. Anyway, we have one level left, and this is where I die. Believe me, this is where I die. I'm already making spoilers, so who cares? So let's tackle World 4 Airship and complete this thing. <laughs> And we've arrived on the Doom Ship, or the Airship if you put it this way. Now the gimmick here is that there are platforms that are moving red and blue depending on how you jump. Depending on your jump, you can be able to use it to your advantage and you'll be able to make it and collect star coins. But you need to watch out for any enemy obstacles that get in your way. Now this is where I believe I made my mistake. Why do I say this? Because I went over instead of under. Because under is where you get the star coin. Here, you could just basically smack on these blocks over and over again and get yourself some extra lives. Though, by doing this, I basically it basically nullifies the extra the lost life. And this is where I mess up and I end up going to die. Not that it matters since I did die either way. Yeah, and this one here, you need a time to move in right. And I can't believe I hit that boomerang and get an extra life. I'm like, wow! That was pretty clever, though at this point, I actually missed the second star coin. I was literally saying, wait, where am I? What am I doing? And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out my right words for this, but I'm just making this as an excuse because I'd rather die and go through the level all over again just so I can do that. And I get another extra life. I don't think it really matters because this game is just too generous with extra lives. Hell, you could be with like over a thousand lives. If you don't believe me, then you should see the Ragnarok Seekers video on that. And this is where I die. 
I needed to do that because I'm, I, it really sucks, but whatever. I got like about more than 80 lives, so I'm not complaining. Anyway, I get myself my raccoon leaf, I'm back on my feet, and this is where we try again. Except this time, instead of taking the top road, I take the bottom road. Because the bottom road is where the second star coin is. You gotta watch out for these rusty wrenches. These rusty wrenches are really annoying. And it looks like I got myself a phone call, since quite frankly, it's my grandmother. I'll answer it a little later, since I don't want to be interrupted. I apologize if the ringing was just got in the way. Anyway, to get the star coin here, you need to head down below, like so. You'll see it when you get there on that bottom platform, like that. Just make sure you don't forget, because you don't want to go through the whole level all over again, just so you can get it. Anyway, just keep repeatedly hitting that block so I can get more coins. And these rusty wrenches actually throw bombs this time. Oh boy. And here comes the Boomerang Brothers, because these Boomerang Brothers are going to be a really tough trial, since they actually throw weapons that actually go back. Think of them like with Kokiri on Boomerangs. Yeah, like Link from Ocarina of Time. If you have a Boomerang, you throw it, and it hits an enemy, it comes right back. It's the kind of weapon that you mostly use nowadays when you're up against them. Anyway, we got ourselves a boss fight, and who are we up against here? <laughs> well, what do you know, we got ourselves a female on the battlefield, and this one tosses boomerangs too. However, the strategy for her is actually a little different. After you hit her, she'll go up and then she'll go down, and it's going to repeat, I believe, a total of four times. After that, she's going to return to normal, and then she'll be moving away from you. And then after you hit her again, the process repeats. Just make sure you dodge her boomerang attacks, and after you hit her, move as fast as possible, because you do not want to get smashed. Believe me, it's not a pleasant experience. And we're done! And she's taken down. We're going to be seeing her again really soon. Why do I say this? Because it's a fat. Anyway, that takes care of this here, since I needed the extra time, of course. They do give you extra time at the end of every boss level, so that way you can be able to get more coins. And I wondered to myself if there's like anything over here. Let's see, I need to be careful because I don't want to die, and it's just one block. That's pretty tame. Anyway, I've tackled the air, wasted enough time, so that's about it. I complete the level and get the gold flag. Enjoy. Yep, that takes care of that, and we are finally done with World 4. At this point, I've already collected every star coin in this world, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time when we tackle the next world. Okay, take care. Thanks for watching.